Okay, so to make an electrolytic separator, you're going to need a couple of things. First of all, is a Tupperware box. It's fairly simple, but you definitely want one with one of these um, fancy sealing lids because you want it to be fairly airtight and you want to be able to close down around the side. But you can get these fairly cheaply. Other things you're going to want. Two short cut off sections of copper pipe. Again, copper pipe's fairly easy to come by, fairly cheap. And two graphite electrodes. Um, these ones are salvaged from old manganese dioxide zinc batteries. They're fairly easy to come by. You can buy graphite electrodes, but it's cheaper just to buy the batteries usually, so do that. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to get your cup pipe and you want to pick a place sort of on one side of the box and you just want to use something to mark out an area around so you know roughly where that locates to the top. Then you want to get your other piece of pipe, you can use the same one if they have the same diameter so it doesn't particularly matter. Uh, put it on the other side and just mark out vaguely where that needs to go. Then you want to take a knife or something else like that and cut out a hole smaller than the bits of pipe, but only slightly smaller. Okay, so once you have your two sort of basic holes, note they don't fit yet, what you want to do is you just want to slowly sort of soften the plastic around the outside. Very sort of slowly. And then try and push the tube through. Because if you do it this way, and then just use a small amount of fire to just seal it on a bit, you get a very good seal of the thing. Now make sure when you're pushing them through, that they go fairly far down, but not all the way to the bottom. You want to leave a sort of relatively well-spaced gap. So I'll put the other one in. And then we'll put the electrodes in the same way, only in through the bottom. And you want them to locate so that the graphite electrode is inside the tube. So you want to make sure that your hole is fairly accurate. But more on that later. Okay, so once you've got your pipes and your electrodes in, what you want to do is you want to just check, look down through them, and make sure that the electrodes are not touching the pipes. If they touch the pipes you will end up with a problem in the long run. So you just want to be careful and make sure that they're all aligned and then once they're aligned just get some glue and put them around the side of the holes just to seal it so that it's properly airtight and watertight. Okay so I have my electrolysis box and I've just got some water added into it. All of my glue's in place, everything's sealed up and I'm just going to add some bicarbonate of soda to the water. Now what this does is it's an ionic salt and it will act as an electrolyte. So what it will essentially do is it will make it easier for the electric current to travel through the water. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to get the top. I have similarly glued both of these securely in place and made it so that they go down over the top. Is that the right way around? That is the right way around. Let me just... I need to specifically check that it's not interfering at all with anything. I really should have marked it so I know which way around to put it down. So that's all well sealed now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some ordinary balloons, just going to put them over the top of the copper pipe and these will hopefully catch all of the gases given off by the thing. So what I have is I have a small AC-DC converter just connected to a power supply and I'm just going to slowly and work out how to put these wires onto the bottom. This is rather difficult to do so I'll just hook that round under 
there and get this one mm, a little I don't think there's any electrical connection being made between that and the electrode, but the two are connected. And I can see bubbles forming. I can see bubbles forming on the outside of this, which means this is touching, so I'll just move that so it's not doing that anymore. Probably adjust it on this side as well. Okay, so I've got my two balloons fairly well filled up now, actually. They're both at fairly high pressures. Um, they'll both be at the same pressure, even though there's more hydrogen, because, of course, the pressure is equal in the entire system, because it's a closed system. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to turn all the lights off, I'm going to set this to record, and I'm going to detonate my hydrogen. Okay, so... Holding at arm's length, and well, went quite well. Let's see what happens if we do the oxygen. Oh, that proves oxygen as well. Oh, that worked really well. Although my balloon is now on fire. So, yeah, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll be back next Monday with something else interesting.